Hi, my name is Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. And today we're planting the brassicas. So it's an exciting day, clearing lots of space in the little greenhouse and reducing my watering workload a bit. Pretty good. That's the first half of the brassica bed and it just continues back a bit. And I've just started putting in the planting holes. And I'll just show you the details of what I'm doing. So this is the bed and as you can see it's got this rough compost and it's uh, spent mushroom compost on the first couple of inches of it and then there's some aged compost a bit further down and then basically it's very very sandy soil. Um, I'm digging the holes just by pulling the soil back like that with the uh, little fork um, rather than actually sort of digging a hole because I'm trying not to bring any soil to the surface, the soil's full of weed seeds, uh, whereas this uh, compost is effectively sterile. So I want the sterile compost on the top, I want the soil underneath, so pulling it back. Then I'm pre-watering the holes and I'm trying to fill that hole fairly full with water and then let it drain down. So there's lots of moisture there to draw the roots down deep. And actually just before I water, I'm putting just a little bit uh, of seaweed powder, uh, so seaweed fertilizer, that's mixed with a little bit of composted chicken manure. Now I'm not putting very much on, just a little bit to get it started. And the reason for that is that this whole bed has had a green manure on it, and it's had field beans on it. And all the field bean roots are still in this ground and I'll just pop up a picture to show you that um, and you can see the roots and you can see all of the little uh, nodules and they are full of nitrogen fixed uh, into those nodules by bacteria that live on the roots. Now it's worth also mentioning that lots of people say that uh, you know that happens with beans and you know, look over there I've got some more uh, broad beans rather than field beans um, but it's important to note that those little nodules that you see on the roots are only full of nitrogen when the beans are effectively at that stage, which is the stage that this bed was at uh, when I cleared it, i.e. the flowers are just starting to open. If you leave it much longer, if you leave it until the beans are formed, then the nodules have been depleted in nitrogen because that nitrogen has been used to create the beans. Uh, the roots are still worth leaving in because obviously there's organic matter in the roots that will rot down but those little nitrogen nodules are only useful as a source of fertiliser really uh, when you harvest the tops um, before, well just when the flowers are opening. And all of the tops, so all of those broad bean like tops from the field beans were chopped up and put on that bed uh, which is where the squash is going to go. And obviously there's not as much nutrients in the uh, tops as in those roots, but still uh, a worthy addition to, uh, to feed those squash plants. Now the plan here is to uh, have a mix of long-lived brassicas and short-lived brassicas. So basically the long-lived ones will be the ones that will last into next year so that's the sprouts and the collets and maybe the odd kale um, and the short-lived ones are the um, broccolinis the calabrese and some of the red cabbages so and then we've got some long-lived red cabbages as well and so they're all going to be planted in alternates and I'll show you what I mean by that on the bed. Okay, so here's the basic idea. I've started with sprouts and red cabbage. So two sprouts, one red cabbage, two sprouts, one red cabbage. And that should mean that those sprouts get a really good amount of space once the uh, red cabbage is out. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure when that red cabbage will be done, but let's say September, something like that. So. Yeah, I think that's pretty good timing and yeah, I think it's going to work well. Now obviously you could squeeze everything in at much closer spacing than I'm doing here. 
um, but I have the luxury of a fair amount of space and not a lot of water uh, and so I think on balance this is probably about right and I might squeeze some other things in and I'll talk about how I'm going to net all this once I've got it all finished. So I thought I'd just talk a little bit about how I prepared these seedlings. So they're initially just grown in a pot then they're pricked out into uh, these little trays. I'll show you those in a second. Um, and they've just been grown on in the polytunnel and they've done fine in there although some of them just look a little bit hot in there for them um, which is why some of them are just a little bit leggy particularly the sprouts um, and then a week before i planted them i hardened them off and while they were hardening off i watered them with a nematode uh, it's a general purpose nematode i think it's called fruit and veg protection i'll put the link in the uh, in the description um, and one of the things that that protects against is cabbage root fly and so for the week they were in they were outside they were protected against cabbage root fly and for the first week or so that they're in the ground now i don't use collars on my seedlings and whoops just a wasp just flying around in there um i don't use um collars because they just blow off in the wind um but I do occasionally, you know, in the first few weeks, first few months rather of life, I will water with um, this nematode. Um, that gives them a really good start and they're really nice, big, strong plants. Um, which hopefully, by the time their nets come off, uh, there'll be no risk of infection, um, of infection uh, attack by the uh, cabbage root fly. So here's an example of the red fugo which is the red cabbage uh, variety that I'm planting at the moment and here's an example of the sprout which is a brendan and i'm quite pleased with that root system it's just coming to the surface it's not too uh, pot bound so those should uh, get off really well the uh, plants have been really well watered and we're heading for a period I think it's going to be fairly cold um, and damp tomorrow uh, and then it warms up again on Saturday so hopefully they'll get established um, you know, before that hot weather on Saturday. Okay that's all the brassicas in and the theory is that everything that needs to be harvested first is on the outer edges so that's where the tender stem broccoli is, that's where the calabrese is, things like that. Things that uh, will be harvested later and infrequently are closer to the middle. So that's where all the red cabbages are and things like that. And then the sprouts and the clets make up the rest. And I've just started putting in the frame. And it looks a right old mess at the moment. Everything's up in the air and not level. And it is a good idea to just put it in roughly to uh, to start off with rather than trying to get it all perfect and then just walk around and push everything down a bit until it's level i'm being a bit controversial this year with the netting because i am putting a fine net on uh, but my intention is to take it off when the plants are about two foot high by that time in my experience here on this site at least the pigeons have pretty much lost interest there's just too much so much for them to eat um, and what i found last year was that insects are going to get in anyway they're always going to get in somehow or other and if you leave the net on you're leaving the insects in but you're leaving the predators out and that when i compared the crops that i'd grown without any protection and the ones that I grew with protection set aside pigeons the ones that grew without protection were just as good and the reason was is you know as I said before they are getting the predators and the pests but more importantly I'm walking around them all the time and I'm looking at them inspecting them and dealing with pests that I find and when they're hidden away behind a net I just neglect them it's such a pain to get in to take the net off to crawl inside 
the uh, you know the um, enclosure you know it's very claustrophobic well, I'm a bit claustrophobic with all the masses of leaves all around me and it's just a horrible job whereas once the nets are off and the frame is dismantled it's really easy to move around and to weed and to look for pests and to spray water spray neem oil spray etc so the um, other thing is I'll then take all of these fence pins and I'll use those fence pins to support the plants um, and so that saves me doubling up on fence pins uh, and it's just about the right time when the plants are a couple of feet high um, that's the kind of time you know so this sort of height just getting to the top here um, that's the time they need the supports so take all these fence pins out pop them in as supports and uh, job done so that's what I'm doing this year and we'll see how well it works so while I've been putting the brassica frame up down there uh, Debbie is putting the first of the bean frames up and she's done a lovely job she's reused all of the clips that we previously used last year and she's done a really nice job very nice and rigid these are new canes we got them off eBay and they were really cheap and uh, putting these cross beams in makes an absolute world of difference to the rigidity of, uh, of this type of uh, frame structure so you do have to fasten it at all the junction points there and there etc etc and there but uh, yeah really very much very highly recommended uh, technique to put those cross beams in so everything's watered in now not too much top water because I've already pre-watered the holes and I want to encourage the roots to go down when I took these plants out last time I found that a lot of the roots had gone horizontal and not many had gone down so I'm concentrating on trying to encourage deep rooting this time and I put the canes down and the blocks that I'm going to use to hold the netting and I've put this rope just down the middle here and it just loops around each point as it goes along it just makes the whole thing really rigid and it's just a bit quicker than canes down the centre I'm just in the shed and I thought I'd show you the choices of nets so this is the butterfly netting and this is actually what I used last year on the first batch of brassicas and the white fly and the cabbage aphid definitely get through this so it's great for butterflies but in some ways they're a bigger problem this one is a much finer mesh and in theory that does keep out the uh, white fly and the cabbage aphid although as I said we did have some issues and what we did find is that the butterflies <laughs> somehow find a way to sneak in uh, through this net so as I said it's a slightly slight issue I do think on balance based on my limited experience it's better to be walking through your beds harvesting from them watching them inspecting them pulling leaves off them, washing them down, etc. rather than relying on nets. Well, before you put your nets on, I've just forgotten, you need to uh, put the eye savers or uh, you know, use canes that have got nice smooth ends. Otherwise you'll rip your nets. So there's the net in now. And last year we had a real mess around trying to keep this net fastened down and um, we didn't want to use any pegs or anything like that because we haven't got any pegs I guess but we do have some of these spare canes so actually by using a block on top of the canes it seems to work really well it holds this down quite nicely close to the floor um, I don't think we're going to get any insects in there so uh, yeah I'm pretty pleased with that and uh, <laughs> basically all, all I want to do now though is take it off <laughs> because it just looks so ugly and it'll look so lovely when it's taken off but uh, needs must at this time of year 
So that's a good two days work actually. So we've popped up those two beam frames. We've uh, taken up the field beans, chopped them up. Mulk put down, uh, I don't know, two ton of uh, spent mushroom compost. Planted all the brassicas, netted it up, done a bit of weeding, all done. See you soon.